Okay, so now we are going to go over how to run Primer 3 at the command line. So first you have to install the Primer 3 program. And so using conda install is the easiest way to do this. And there's a manual page um, at the following link. Um, so go ahead and install that. And then this manual kind of goes over um, all of the options for how to use it. Uh, but we'll go over the basics of this in this in this next part of the value. Um, so the basics of how you run it are the easiest way to run it is um, one of the things that's important is that you have to know the name of the program. Uh, so the name is not Primer 3, but it's actually Primer 3 Core. So in order to run it, uh, you have to type Primer 3 Core. And then the easiest way to run this is to give it a file. And if you're able to give it a file, that has the appropriate arguments, and we'll go over what the appropriate arguments are, um, then you can run the program using that. So here I have successfully run the program, and it has returned a bunch of different primers. Uh, so the Zero primer is the um, the best primer, so this is uh, should be pretty similar to what you find in the web browser. Although versions are not always exactly the same, so you shouldn't be too concerned if the they don't match up as the if if the web browser isn't running the exact same version of Primer Three as your command line is, then there'll be like subtle tweaks that might change what the best primer is. Uh, so. This returns the left sequence and the right sequence, and then also kind of other information about it. So the melting temperature, the GC percentage, etc. Um, and then it does this for multiple primer pairs. So you know, there's also a, a one, a two, a three, and and a four. And so I was able to get this to run by providing it with this file, primer3example.txt, and that had the appropriate um, information within it. And so let's see what that file looks like. Um, so I'll just pico it. And so what you'll notice is that it has um, a number of options that are all in capital letters, and these options then have an equal sign, and then the value of those options is provided after the equal sign. So here we've given it nine different options, and then to indicate that we are done for this particular sequence, um, we give it an equal sign. And then something that's important is that you can't have an extra line after the equal. So if you did something like this, you would get an error if you tried to run it. So I'll just show you just for... Um, Basically, you get an input line with no equals, so the final record was not terminated by equals. So if you ever see that, that's because you have an extra line at the end. So you're actually able to give it multiple sequences to pick primers from, and so each one of these would be separated by an equal sign. So if you go to their example, you know, you'll see something like that where they have a bunch of different sequences with different names and different sequences, and then they all have an equal sign to indicate that the end. So that is the basics. And so when we looked in the in the web browser in order to run it, you know, the uh, you can provide it with a sequence ID and, for example, a template sequence. And so these this option here is a one to one correspondence with the option here. You just need to know the name of that argument. So uh, sequence ID. So in this case. This is a short sequence of the sequence, and so now I just match that sequence ID equals example, and so I was able to give it a name. Um, you know, paste the temple sequence before, so a lot of times you can just click on the link and it'll provide you with the name of that argument. So sequence, sequence template equals this, and then I provided it with the name of the sequence right here. Um, so do I want to pick the left primer? So this is the default option. So one of the things we haven't really covered is that you can actually specify a primer. So maybe you only want to pick a right primer. So you could potentially like specify, I want the left one to be this. Um, so that is a checkbox that you can pick. 
And so primer pick left primer, so you'll notice that matches that, and that is equal to one. So the one is a true, it's a Boolean, it's a true. Um, so you can see Boolean. And so basically we specified that we want this, we want primer three to pick a left primer and we want it to pick a, a right primer. Um, general settings, so before we talked about optimal primer size, so if we click on this, there's an, there's an argument called primer op size, and so that we specified is equal to 18. Um, and so, you know, in this case, the default is 20, so we've actually specified a different optimal size. Um, and then primer minimal size, uh, so again, if we go here, we'll notice that primer min size is that. So any of the, the web-based arguments um, and options are also available at the command line. And to it's pretty straightforward to find the names of these uh, by just clicking on that link. So the website has you know, much more readable names for these things. Um, and then the command line has these kind of like one word things that are all you know, put together. So you can also do excluded regions and again, sequence include excluded region. So um, you can also specify these here. Um, and you can also always search for these, uh, so if you find like a uh, option in a command file and you want to know what it does, you can also search for that within this help page and it's pretty easy to find this. So this gives you information about what exactly this argument does. So, and you know, the primer product size range, so we specified a very short one right here. So, we save this file and now we run it and so now we get primers returned. So one of the things you'll notice is that it repeats. Uh, so what is sent to standard output is uh, the arguments that we specified. So all of the arguments that we specified are printed back out to standard out and then the primers that are returned, some information about the primer. So five primers were returned and then eventually we get to the information on the first primer right here. So if you wanted to save this information, you know, you can just redirect it using the, the uh, greater than sign um, to a file name of your choice. And now that would be one option you could use in order to, to use your um, Python 3 to analyze this data. So we will have some examples in class of how to use primer three to pick primer pairs and to use the command line to pick primer pairs. And the goal of the homework assignment that you will complete will simply be to combine the subprocess module in Python to run the, pri pi to run the primer three command line and then also parse the output in order to print out uh, the primers uh, that you want. So I didn't really cover this, but why would you want to use the command line versus using you know, the web page? Well, if you're simply de designing a single set of primers, most likely you want to use the web page. But sometimes you might want to design primers for a large number of regions, especially in this day and age of genomics. So, you know, the one of the first times I've ever used this was to design oligos for microarrays. Um, so if you wanted to amplify all 4,000 genes in a bacterial genome in order to create a microarray, you know, you do that by actually designing primers and then amplifying these PCR products and then that was what was actually printed on the array. Or maybe you want to do some sort of like high throughput proteomics where you amplify the cDNAs for all of the genes um, that you're interested in or a large number of genes that you're interested in. So most likely you, you might have a thousand different genes and so you don't want to actually run this website and so that's where the ability um, to use Python and the ability to use the command line becomes very, very useful. All right, so that is it, um, and that covers um, a kind of real-life example of how you might use the command line um, using the Primer 3 program.